In Central Asia, over 4,000 years ago, man for the first time turned the dream of hunting with a bird of prey into a reality. Today, falconers from different cultures all around the world maintain this traditional form of hunting with very few changes in the techniques for handling the birds of prey. The Kazakhs have managed to adapt to extremely harsh living conditions thanks to the yaks. From these bovines, they obtain wool, leather, meat and milk. This nomadic people, present in China and the former Soviet Union, can also be found in Western Mongolia near the Altai Mountains in the region known as Mayan Olgi. Living in small circular tents called yurtas, they manage to fill the most inhospitable places with life. From the time they are children, they are used to having eagles around as if they were simply another member of the family. They rapidly become accustomed to the presence of this ally of the air in any place and situation. And it is hardly surprising, given that their grandfathers and the grandfathers of their grandfathers have practiced the art of falconry since time immemorial. The equipment has barely changed in the course of thousands of years. The hoods, rudimentary but extremely effective in their function of keeping the eagles calm, are entirely handmade. Also great horsemen, the Kazakhs, mount on saddles that are small works of art. On their saddles they place the baldak, the wooden support on which they rest the arm that carries the eagle on gloved fists. On the hat of all Kazakhs there is a small plume of eagle owl feathers. The reason is to keep away the evil spirits. They believe that in the feathers passages of the Quran can be read. Wishing to protect their hunting companions as well, they attach another plume of owl feathers to their backs. Flights to the lure constitute the main phase in the introduction of their eagles to hunting. The falconer standing at the top of a slope takes the hood off his bird, while an assistant gallops off on horseback, dragging a fox skin behind him. As soon as its hood is removed, the bird darts off in pursuit, as if it were a living prey. These flights build up the muscles of the eagle and hone its hunting instincts. The berkuches, which is the Kazakh word for falconers that use eagles, normally hunt hares and foxes. In the attacks on the lure, they train their birds in pursuit, at the same time achieving good muscle tone. The power of their wings must be sufficient to catch animals used to fleeing from their natural predators. It is also necessary to develop different capture techniques, which enable them to react to the flight strategies of their potential victims. For this they fly their birds every day, in order to keep them as strong or even stronger than their relatives in the wild. Little by little, the fist of the falconer becomes the watchtower from which the bird scans the surrounding area and flies off in search of food. The majestic glide of the eagle skimming through the sky, combing the air with its feathers, mesmerizes the falconer until he feels that his heart too is flying on its wings. After many days of patient training, not without its setbacks, there is a notable improvement in the eagle's capture skills as it gains speed and the vertical swoops down onto the lure. The complicity between bird and the falconer increases each day. The flights to the fist strengthen the bond between them. The eagles diligently answer the call of their masters. It is almost time to see if they are ready for the real hunt. Wolves are frequent predators around the village of the Berkuches. Often hunger drives them to attack and kill their cattle. The Kazakhs, who to a great extent depend on their cattle for survival, must always be on the alert to make sure they come to no harm. From the early hours of the morning around the yurtas there is greater activity than usual. The Berkuchis have decided to go to hunt a wolf today. They could hunt with firearms, but they want to test the skills of one of their eagles. They know that it'll be an uneven battle, and the bird could well be injured or even killed. A wolf is five or six times heavier than an eagle, 
And what's more, its powerful jaws are armed with sharp teeth. But they all agree that Tragstuluk Yaiderjan's exceptional eagle has possibilities of achieving this heroic feat. That kind of hunting is not at all normal. Despite its great tradition in the Kazakh culture, hunting wolves has always been reserved for the chosen few. Few Berkuts have the daring, the strength, and the technique to bring down a wolf that is fighting for its very life. The slightest mistake by the eagle could mean losing at the very least a toe in one sharp bite. Spurred on by the difficulty of the task, they set out on their extraordinary hunt. To hunt down a wolf using only an eagle, the Berkuchis climb up the mountain. From up there, they can look out over the landscape, and the bird has the advantage of height. In addition, any wolf surprised on the plain at the foot of the mountain normally flees up the mountain slope. A wolf is prowling around its domains, remaining alert for any sign of life. The falconers continue to ascend, mounted on their tough little horses. The slope is steep, but they are coming closer and closer to the summit. While they rest, taking in the grandeur of the landscape, one of the beaters climbs up the slope. In the distance, he has spotted a fox distractedly eating the remains of some prey. Used to hunting foxes and motivated by the beauty of the skin of this individual, they don't hesitate for a moment to release the jesses of one of the eagles in order to try to catch it. right the mistake of not being on the alert. The falconer approaches as fast as he can. He will try to prevent his companion from being wounded by the kicks and bites of the fox, and on the other hand, in the struggle, the bird's claws could damage the prize pelt. With foxkin, the Kazakhs line the inside of the hats that protect their heads. With the heat of the gallop and the emotion of the moment, the Berkuchi now takes his hat off and offers his eagle a piece of meat to prevent it from damaging the skin. He knows that his companions are waiting for him to continue the hunt and achieve the real goal of their day, to hunt a wolf. The scouts continue to beat the terrain on the backs of their tireless horses. Their presence is eventually noticed by the canine, who alerted runs off away from them. Several eyes follow his movements from up on high. Others remain covered up until the time comes. When the wolf is about 500 meters away, the hoods are taken off the eagles. Several fly off towards it, but not all approach the king of the steppe. Only one, Trags to look, will challenge it and try to bring it down. Jaiderjan goes down the slope as fast as he can. Drags to look, his Berkute has just hunted the sixth wolf in his life. The determination of David has intimidated and vanquished Goliath. Once more, courage and skill have won out over strength. The other birds are collected in. Falconers and eagles know they have just seen an exceptional feat. The wolf is put onto the back of one of the horses. The wind is getting up and with the temperature many degrees below zero, 
They want to get back to the village as soon as possible. They must set out soon because they have come further than they intended. The members of the hunting party regroup, animatedly commenting on the progress and the outcome of the hunt. Tied out after their long day, they must hurry now because dusk is falling. At night, the low temperatures make it dangerous to remain out in the open air, and so they do not rest until after riding for several hours, they see the yurtas of their village in the distance. The smoke from the chimney tells them that someone is waiting for them for dinner. Their women, also tireless workers, take charge of all the household tasks. But for the Berkuches, the priority when they get home is to see to their birds. They have spent many hours perched on their fists, battling against the wind, the galloping of the horses, hunger and cold. Once inside, around the heat of the fire, they are rewarded with a good meal, offered in peculiar wooden bowls. Once again, they have demonstrated that as well as a king, there is a queen of the steppe, the Berkut, the eagle of the Altai mountains, and during the dinner, to the musical accompaniment of the Dombra, they dedicate an ancestral song to her. It says, On the summit of the great Altai, on a rocky outcrop, an eagle flies up and perches on the rock. The eagle enjoys, plays, flies, lives, capturing the fox it pleases its falconer and demonstrates its pride to all the rest. If it does not manage to hunt, it'll die. They live together in this life, but after death, Master and Eagle will meet again. Ding, ding, ding. 